How's it going guys? I am Connor from Running Warehouse and today I'm here with Kurt Stockbridge. This is the man behind the innovation at Skechers Performance. And you know, you have been behind developing some of my favorite shoes on the market. How are you doing today, Kurt? I'm doing great. It's a pleasure to be here, Connor. I'm really excited, especially to show you the line of the shoes we've got. Well, Kurt, we got a lot of questions for you. I think Skechers is the brand I get asked about the most. So let's go back to the last year. We saw the introduction of the Skechers Razor 3, which featured that ultra responsive hyperburst midsole. And now in 2019, the whole collection has hyperburst. I think we hear a lot about that midsole compound, but no one really knows what it is. Can you talk about what hyperburst is and how it might be different than a standard EVA? Okay, well, Connor, it truly is a special midsole foam. Um, it's like no other foam on the market right now. And I'm gonna explain all of that about how it's so different. Uh, typical EVA foam, as you can see, uh, is actually chemically blown. That is, it starts from something solid, it's got chemicals in it when it's heated, and it's pressurized, they expand. So think of like a loaf of bread, it'll just expand, and that's how you get the midsole. Not so much with, uh, with hyperburst, it's not done that way at all. It's actually what we say is mechanically blown. So we use a technology from the packing industry called supercritical fluid technology, and we've used that over a period of three years of iteration and science that's gone into this with our innovation team is very talented uh, coming up with this foam and we've got a result that everyone talks about resiliency and being lightweight it's all of that and more but what we hear from runners is how they've embraced it and, and responded to it is because it's different it feels different they describe it as different and we'll talk about that so speaking of the midsole, right here, we've got the baby part and what it ends up turning into is the final product. Can you talk about how we get from this to this and what some of the benefits are of this process? Sure can, Connor. So you mentioned this is the baby part and uh, in fact, this is just EVA. There's really no difference in this EVA where, where this starts versus, or hyperburst starts versus this one, how it starts. You can see it's translucent and that's because it does, does not have or contain the chemical blowing agents that say this would. We actually blow it a different way. It becomes this piece from simply putting this into, imagine a big pressure cooker. This piece and a lot of pieces are in that pressure cooker. We introduce CO2 and nitrogen. It's a gas state, but that will not penetrate this. But if we can heat that CO2 and nitrogen, it'll actually become a supercritical state. It's a state between a gas and a liquid. And at that point, it can penetrate this piece. So this piece has actually become saturated. Imagine it like a wet sponge. And so it's in that pressure cooker. Now what we do is we release the pressure, normalize the conditions. That CO2 wants to become a gas again. It's like a kind of a liquid state. It wants to become a gas again. So it expands and it goes bloop, pop, just like that. And that's it, that's the key. So Connor, you're still saying, well, so what? You know, this is just a midsole um, blocker, just like a standard blocker, but, but it's not. Let's take a look inside and you'll see. First start with just conventional EVA. Now this is our ultra flight material. It's still one of the lightest uh, foams on the market and we still use it today because it's excellent. But if you look at the cross section, you'll see that it's solid. Um, you know, there's, there's uh, very small cells there, uh, but it's a solid mass. If you take a look at Hyperburst, on the other hand, you see a cell structure. There's hundreds of thousands of these cells, and you can see how big they are and how much they create space. They've actually replaced the solid mass, which that's why it's so light. And then you want to know why it's so resilient. It's because of the cell walls. The cell walls are actually thicker, and so butt up against each other when impacted, they are extremely resilient. So that's the difference. That's the magic of, of the Hyperburst foam. Perfect, so we talk about this process, we talk about the science on how we get this hyperburst midsole, but what is it gonna feel like on foot? When you have that hyperburst midsole, what is the experience like as you transition from foot strike to toe off? Sure. So runners love, there's two things they love. They respond to being lightweight, which is significantly lighter, like we said. It's significantly more responsive. That's, that's great, but what we hear from runners is that it just feels really different, as you mentioned, from toe off, or just an impact. The comment I think we hear most often from runners is just how fast they feel in it. They feel like it deflects and cushions and feels soft, but yet gives energy return, which is interesting because a lot of foams will feel soft, but if they're too soft, then they don't spring back. So this has kind of that both feeling. We, we also fe uh, hear a lot about how protective it is. And the comment we hear, um, second most common comment I think that we hear from runners is, 
is, my gosh, I just ran a 12 mile or a marathon and I don't feel beat up. I feel like ready to go for the next one, which is a real compliment um, to the foam. That's yeah. how it's different. So I've been running in the full 2019 Hyperburst line and there really is that unique feel when you get this shoe on your foot. I think Hyperburst can be summed up with lightweight, responsive, and cushioned. You know, you can take my word for it, but if you want to try it on yourself, it's available now. You can find it at runningwarehouse.com.